crooked. Hold on. All right, Shalom. Shalom. We want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Rakhakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, uh, those men that are doing his work in sincerity and truth. And the one third of you believers out there, to you all, we say Shalom and greetings. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. So, um, you know, brothers, we got camping uh, in a few hours. You know, I mean, this brother was just fellowshipping, you know, thinking about uh, the state of our people and specifically those who have the truth. All right. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who follow great millstone, right? So if you follow great millstone, you know how important we take salvation. You know how important we take serving and fearing the Lord, man. All right. And that's, that's vital in the times that we have now. And so you got a lot of men that are taking salvation lightly. You know, you got people that are out here, uh, men are not doing their videos. Uh, people, uh, you got people skipping camp. All right, you got you got all these attributes that are not uh, qualities of men of the Lord, man. All right, and so when the, the time comes for judgment, don't be appalled and don't be shocked if you don't get beamed up. And Lord willing, we are that we are that number, and we're doing all the things that we can to try to get saved. But don't be don't be caught off guard, you know, because you know what you're doing. All right. You know exactly what you're doing. Uh, you know what? Go ahead. Bring out Philippians real quick, bro. Come on. This is Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, mm -hmm. work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's right. So you're supposed to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, man. All right? This is so much meat in this scripture. That gets overlooked. You know, we're gonna read uh read it read it again so we can break some of the pieces up. Read that again, brother. Come, Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Right. He says, not not only in my presence, uh, but in my absence. So when you're uh around men of the Lord, it's like it's it's cool to be charitable and brotherly, but you gotta be a man of the Lord when ain't no other brothers around, man. All right. This is not about uh, being a man of the Lord when you see fit, man. You know, that's how a lot of people get. They want to be men of the Lord when when they see fit, when it's convenient for them. You know, you got to be a man of the Lord in all of your daily walk, man. All right. Because at the end of the day, the angels are watching. How about Shimei Shai is watching? All right. You you more afraid uh, of the eyes of men, man. You know, you afraid of oh, this dude, he, you know, he going to see if I did my videos or, uh, you know, uh, if I don't come to camp, they're going, nah, bro, we ain't the ones you need to be afraid of, bro. We ain't going to lay hands on you. We not going to do nothing to you. You know, it's the will of your Yahweh Shimei Al Shai for you to fear him, man. Okay, continue on, brother. Uh, it says, work out your own salvation. Salak, yeah. Work out, all right? Work out your own salvation, okay? So that means you got to make a strong effort in order to serve the Lord, work out your own salvation. You got men that are taking salvation like it's just a, you know, like it's a, a free pass to uh, to Six Flags or something, man. You know, well, I can go if I want to. I don't. Nah, bro. You got to work at this, man. This takes effort. This takes dedication. This takes humility. This takes fear, man. Because when you don't do things like the the lessons that you're supposed to do, and I get it. You know, some brothers may not be able to do a lesson. Every single day, they got certain walks, but hey, at the end of the day, that's what the Lord required. That's what the Lord asks. So that's what you need to be doing. At least making your putting your best foot forward. But you got people out here that are making no effort to work out their own salvation, man. Because we, you know, obviously through the prophecies, we know that uh, Yahweh Shai, a lot of things still got to take place. Well, a few things really. You know, we waiting for the mark of the beast, Jacob's trouble, and World War Three. But you got men that if, if Yahweh, if Yahweh Shai, they can make all that happen in one day if they wanted to, right? So if Yahweh Shai pulled up next week, right? Then what? Your your last your last week of of doing lessons or you miss camp? That's your example that you left for the Lord to look upon, man. You know, you want to be your every day. You want to put your best effort in order to serve the Lord, man. You know. Uh, so yeah, you can finish up on that, brother. You can start your workout. 
Uh, it says, uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, man. You got to have a healthy fear of the Lord when it comes to this thing. Everything that drives us is the fear of the Lord, man. You know, me and our brother was, we were serious, but we were making jokes like, hey, even if we got Lord willing, this don't happen. But if we got hospitalized, we're going to still be in there trying to get a three or five minute video off. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm in here, but I'm trying to get it done. You know what I'm saying? That's the fear that you got to have for the Lord, man. That's uh, that's how the, the mindset that you need to have. And many men don't have that mindset. They'll give uh, the scriptures talk about men making an excuse uh, for for their will, man. They find an excuse. Hey, bro, I was in the hospital. I couldn't make no videos. Hey, bro, I had a tough week. You know what I'm saying? It's real hard on me. I ain't do no videos this week, man. Th that's ridiculous, man. You're making an excuse to try to get away. Who are you trying to trick? You know, we not the ones you try. You know, they say like a. Uh, when you like uh, dieting and exercise, if you taking cheat meals, they say you ain't cheating nobody but yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's for your health. That's for your benefit. So even if you got a, a sponsor or somebody that's uh, helping you like, hey, yo, you know, this is the diet and you eat all the healthy food when they're around. But when you go back home, you eat all unhealthy food. You ain't you ain't fooling them. You only doing this damage to yourself, man. You know, that's the same thing goes with eating this roll, man. Because yep, if, if they eating her. Like you said, if they eat unhealthy, you know, then they come back around, you know, to that trainer. The trainer is going to recognize, you know, that that, that you that you've been slacking. Yep. And yep. That, and that, that's the same way through the spirit. Yep. You know, we, we know when a brother, you know, is not doing what he's supposed to do. All right, because that vibration that, you know, is we can feel the vibration coming off somebody. You know, if they're doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. Yep. Absolutely, bro. You can feel it. You can see it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, we don't even got to check. Uh, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like a pop star said, hey, man, I ain't about to be checking all you brothers' pages to see if you did your videos. Because we ain't the ones you got to worry about who checking you, really. You know what I'm saying? The angel's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that brother, you know, he ain't been doing what he's supposed to be doing. He, the, the Lord hearing that. You know? You, 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 you picked up. That's the thing. You picked up this plow, man. Right? You picked up this plow. You you you've applied yourself to the work of the Lord. You taken a, an agreement, right? You taken an agreement to say I'm going to serve the Lord. And when you took that agreement, now you're in a state where you got to do whatever work is necessary, man. You know, and now men don't want to do what's necessary. You know? Did you have something on that? Uh, okay, go ahead. Real quick. Romans 11 and 22 uh, says, "Behold, behold, therefore the goodness and severity of the Most High." On which, on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also sh shalt be cut off. Mm. You know, uh, the, you know that that uh, that severity, man. All right, that severity is a serious. We always talk about the severity, the the austerity of of Yahweh mm -hmm. You know, if you're not being, if you know, if, if you're not taking this truth serious, all right, if you're not trembling, it says, work out your own for salvation. With fear and trembling, you gotta be, you gotta be trembling before you have about Shemiah was shot. Mm -hmm. You know, doing everything that you uh, that you need to do to to please him. All right, because if you don't, the scripture says you could be cut off, man. Mm -hmm. All right, and that, that's why a lot of people, you know, they slowly but surely fall off. You know, they, you know, you see them slacking on their videos. We have seen it uh, firsthand. Somebody slacking on their videos, you know, and, and then then they spear it off. Then, uh, then next thing you know, you know they. They, they don't come around no more. They out of there. You know, and uh, yeah, all of those are traits. You know what I'm saying? You start to see, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you, I'm putting this in the term of like in a relationship, right? You, your woman first be all over you, all lovey-dovey. Next thing you know, you, she ain't hitting you up as much. Next thing you start to see the descending uh, factors of what she's not supposed to be doing. The same way it goes for men and the truth, man. Next thing you know, you know, she gone. It, the same way goes for these men out here. They be next thing you know they bugged out, getting lineups, smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? Hey, in one day, out the next, man. You know, I want to get this real quick. This is a uh, Second Corinthians five and eleven. Actually, let me start at ten. Woo -hoo! Nine. Second Corinthians five and nine. It says, "Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, man." All right. So we're laboring so that we can be accepted of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. All right. We're not just laboring for, for, for naught, laboring for vanity. We're laboring so we can be accepted of the Lord. man. OK, it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that everyone may receive the, the, the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to all appear before that judgment seat, man. 
All right. And so in that day, what what's gonna be your your what's gonna be your saying? Oh Lord, you know I had a bad week, so I ain't do my videos. The Lord don't want to hear that, man. That's an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Cause let, let your woman call you up. You know what I'm saying? You gonna you got you down to do everything she asks, right? But you won't do what the Lord is asking, man. All right. The Lord is the only one promising you salvation. All right. He's promising you keys to the kingdom, and you don't want to do what's necessary to get it, man. All right. You got to take this thing seriously. Uh, verse eleven. This is the point. It says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, you know? So that's how men are persuaded, through the terror of the Lord, man. If you're not afraid of the Lord, then then what, what is it for, man? You know, you're, you're, that means you having, uh, the scriptures talk about um, uh, the fear of the Lord is how we gain knowledge and wisdom, all right? That's the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. So if you're not afraid of the Lord, that means you're being unknowledgeable. You're being unwise, all right? And we try to one of the emphasis that we try to convey is uh, what we say. We are here to seek the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the Lord, man. It says, uh, but we are made manifest unto the most high. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. You know, so hey, at the end of the day, man, the terror of the Lord is what should persuade you, what should move you. OK, when you come out to camp because you're afraid. All right. Of course, we do it now. You know, now it's a balance of of servitude. But first and foremost, it's fear, man. Fear is the 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 preeminence of uh, of coming out and doing what you got to do to serve the Lord, man. The fear of how badly he can jack you up, man. You know, you got it, bro. Uh, uh, let me bring this. Uh, Second Peter chapter. Second Peter chapter one verse ten says, uh, "Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If ye do these things, ye shall never fall." Mm -hmm. All right, and that word diligence goes to make haste. All right, and Apostle Tar labeled this year uh, hastening in the coming of Yahweh Shah. All right, so we got to make haste to make our calling and election sure, man. Yeah. All right, and we supposed to have the same mind as Yahweh Shah. All right, and what did Yahweh Shah, you know, say, uh, what was it, to his mother, I think? Uh, and Luke, this is Luke 2. Uh, I think it was, yeah, I think it was his mother and his father. Like 43 or 48 or something like that. Kind of Luke 2 and 49, it says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I, I must be about my father's business? You know, Yahweh Shah was about his father's business, man. All right? You know, so we're supposed to walk in the same spirit as Yahweh Shah. We're supposed to be about uh, Yahweh's business, man. That's it. And that, that's this word, you know? That's this walk. It's a lot of more to say on that. Okay. okay. You know, um, this is uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9. It says, uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. You see that? So men are counting this thing slack. You know? Oh, well, you know. Uh, I ain't gonna be able to get into a great millstone camp anyway, so I might as well, you know, I come to camp every now and then, or I do my lessons when it's when it's right for me. That's slack, man. All right, that's slack. And uh, the scripture, if you can give me that scripture since I rack and say um, a slothful man, just look up slothful in, uh, on your phone. Slothful. Uh, it's in uh, yeah, it's in Ecclesiasticus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it says uh, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this obviously is talking about um, uh, men. The Lord is long suffering. That's why you got the mercy that you got. That's why you're able to get away with a couple things now. But hey, it's going to come a point in time where the Lord going to come back. He's going to fulfill that promise. The Lord's going to pull up on you, man. All right. And so at that point, it, hey, it's, it's like what? It's too late now. You know, this is the time, brothers. This is the hour. This is the time to get yourselves right and to do what the Lord is asking of you, man. Because if you don't, when judgment day comes, man, you're going to wish you would have done all that you can to serve the Lord, man. You know? Yep. But uh, you found it out? Con. Con. Sirach, or Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 1. A slothful man is, is compared to a filthy stone. Mm -hmm. And everyone will hiss out to his disgrace. See that? A slothful man is kind of as a filthy stone, man. And going, every man will hiss out of his disgrace, man. It's a disgraceful thing when a man is slothful, man. All right? You ever be on a job? Hey, I remember even back in, like, middle school and high school and shit. You got a team project, and you got that one partner who just don't want to do his part, man. Don't do shit. Don't do shit. <laughs> You'll be pissed off, man. Now you got to pick up the slack so you get a good grade on it because he didn't want to do what he was going to do, man. You know? But, hey, the difference is when, um, when the Lord comes back, even though this is a team effort, but the scripture, what did we just read? 
work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So the Lord ain't going to, he going to come and gather up his elect, but he's going to grade you individually, right? He's going to, he said he's coming back to reward every man according to his works. So the Lord is going to be like, hey, did you do your part? You know? Okay, you want to get an A for doing your part. And if you didn't do your part, your ass going to get an F, man. You know? This, this is the mindset that you need to have. A filthy stone, man. You know, brothers who even into the stones, man. You get a stone that got uh, some, some nasty, got some shit on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to touch that, man. You don't want, you want to stay away from it. Like, all right, that, that got bad energy. That's negative. Get that away from me, man. That's how men are counted. You know, because the scripture said we are as lively stones, man. But a slothful man is as a filthy stone. Is it more on that? God, verse 2, it says, A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dung hill. Every man that taketh it up will shake his hand. See that? And we were just, I just said, a stone that got shit on it. A, a, as a dung hill. Dung hill is feces, right? It says a, a slothful man is counted as a dung hill, man. You know? Because you're not doing what's necessary for the, and then not only that, you're not doing what's necessary for the Lord. You're not doing what's necessary for yourself, man. And you know, like I tell the brothers all the time, the scriptures talk about loving your neighbor as you love yourself, right? So if you don't love yourself, how could you love your brother, man? You know, you're not working out your own salvation. You know, there's a scripture that says um, that every man um, is, is fleeing my mind, but every man can uh, basically uh, glory himself. For salvation, you know what I'm saying? We do our works so the Lord, a man may glory in himself and his works, man. Okay, that's important. That's important, man, to be able to glory in and be like, hey, Lord, when the Lord pulls up, hey, Lord, I did everything that you required of me. You know, we going to fear and all that, but we're going to be saying, Lord, please have mercy on me and deliver me up. Now, if your ass in the back of your mind, you're going to be doubting like, hey, maybe I didn't do what was necessary. You know, I wasn't doing my videos. I wasn't going to camp. So now you got to second guess everything that happened to you to decide if, if you're going to make it on the chariot or not. The scriptures talk about in that day, we're going to have confidence. You know, we're going to have confidence, man, because we're going to be standing there like, hey, we fear him, but Lord, we did what you asked of us. So please beam us up. You know, that's the spirit you want to come in. You got I think this right? is the one that you was talking Con, about. That might be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Galatians 6 and 4. Yeah, I think that's it. Really. It says, but let every man prove his own work. I mean, and then... Shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another? See that? Yeah, read that again for me. Galatians 6 and 4. But let every man prove his own work. But let every man prove his own work, man. All right? And we know at the end of the day, your work goes more than just a YouTube video. Right? But we when we when we see men that are on uh, YouTube, we be like, hey, people get on there and comment and scoff. And then what, what do we say? We say, where are your works? You got a man, he got a page with zero subscribers and one video about some folly in the world on there, man. Wait, wait, where are your works, man? Where's your servitude to the Lord to show the world that you were prophesying and standing boldly for his name and his word? Right? Continue. It says, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. Right? So you're going to be seeing on that. Hey, Lord, you know, hey, <laughs> Lord, I've been doing my videos. Lord, I was coming to camp. Lord, I was being brotherly. I was being charitable. You know, Lord, I did everything that you asked. I believed on your name. I believed on your son. I believed in the miracles. You know, I gave double honors to the apostles and the elders. You know, so you can glory in yourself and rejoice in yourself and not in another, man. You can't, I can't be like, hey, yo, bro, you've been doing the work. Hey, I'm going <laughs> to hang on your coattails. You know what I'm saying? Right. It don't work like that because even when you had a, uh, 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 right, let's give an example. So Jeremiah and Baruch, right? Jeremiah was the prophet, but Baruch was his scribe. And Baruch was a prophet too, but Baruch was his scribe. So Baruch was writing down everything that Jeremiah said, but Baruch got his own book too. Right. <laughs> you feel me? Baruch was putting in the work like he was supposed to too. He didn't say, hey, I'm going to ride off of Jeremiah coattails. He said, I got to do the work as well, man. All right? And that's the spirit that you need to come in no matter what your position, man. You know, like Apostle R said, if you've been in this truth for six months or more, you're supposed to be working for the Lord, man. All right? You got the truth now, and now you're taking it like like it's just a lot, like a, a walk in the park, man. This thing is serious business, man. All right? The scriptures talk about being fervent in business, man, and not slothful. This is serious business, man. You know? And so when judgment day comes, don't act appalled. You know what I'm saying? The, the chariot coming and beaming everybody up and then it pass you over, man. You know, and then you like the chariot over there. Now you, it, it's, what happened? Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked, man. And so we're praying that the Lord have mercy on us all because we all say we are the hopeful elect and we pray that we have that number. But don't be appalled, man. 
The Lord gave you ample opportunity, ample time, ample mercy in order to get time, get his, uh, get get yourself together, man. All right, you got it, bro. The second Ezra chapter seven, I start at verse six. It says, "There is also another thing: a city is built and set upon a broad field, and is full of good things, of of all good things. Mm -hmm. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there." Where a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. You know, let's talk about the kingdom of heaven. It says, and only and and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Mm -hmm. You know, so we all, you know, you, you can't just like the brother said, we can't uh, you know, hang on another man's coattail, man. Mm -hmm. All right, you gotta do your own works, man, because only one man, you know. It's, the scripture says only one man can go in his interest at a time. It's a narrow path, man. Yeah. You know, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta prove your own selves, man. Mm -hmm. All right, scripture says, uh, examine yourselves, prove your own selves. Yeah. You know, you know, because we we, we we don't want to be reprobates, man. Facts. You know, a reprobate goes to an unimproved spirit, man. Mm -hmm. You want to be approved by your Shimon Shai. For real. That's what it says. It says we do this to be accepted of him. Right. That's being approved, man. You know, uh, I got one real quick. This is uh, did you have more on that, bro? No, I don't. Okay, uh, this is uh, Second Ezra sixteen and uh, sixty two. It says, "Yea, and the Spirit of the Almighty Power, which made all things and searcheth out all hidden things and the secrets of the earth, surely He knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin." Man, the Lord know your mind, man. The Lord know everything. He know what you thinking. Hey, I ain't gonna do a video today. I'm, I'm gonna just chill. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna take it easy. And hey, you know what? This is this a. I, I got this week off of work. I'm gonna I'm take this weekend and relax a little bit. Man, hey, even when you're relaxing in the world, you still working for the. This is an ongoing thing, man. The work for the Lord don't stop. <laughs> you know, ain't no off seasons. The scriptures say in season and out of season, man. We don't take ain't no days off when, when it comes to Great Millstone, man. That, that's become literal now. You know, it, there was a point in time when we were saying that because we were going, no, no matter if it's cold outside, no matter if it's extremely hot outside, we were doing the work. But now it's literally no days off, man. The scriptures talk about daily edification, daily exhortation, and now the apostles have set a standard for us to follow in, man. So ain't no days off. You can't take no damn sabbatical and be like, hey, yo, brothers, I'm going to take three months off and then I'm going to come back. It don't work like that, man. The Lord, he says he knows the inventions of your heart. What's something? What's an invention? Something that you create. You know what I'm saying? So you created in your mind a thought that you were going to take it easy. Okay? Take it easy. And the Lord's going to, uh, on that day of judgment, the Lord's going to take it easy on cruising right by your ass, man. You know? It says, um, therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame, man. You see that? He said he exactly searched out all your works, man. He know exactly everything that you're doing, man. You know? Hey, you could even it's men and you could even be a man. Let's say you don't do no YouTube videos, but every day you go out to the highways and byways and you don't ever put nothing on the camera and you teach every day of the week on the streets. The Lord still see that. You see what I'm saying? So it ain't about being on YouTube necessarily. But at the end of the day, we know now that this is the standard. So now we're able to see, we got proof now. We're able to see a man's works through his through his YouTube account. But hey, at the end of the day, the Lord still still know exactly what you're about and exactly what you're doing. So it ain't about hiding it from us, man. All right? It's about the things that you're trying to hide from the Lord. You can't hide from the Lord. This is the uh, last one. Actually, two more. It says, and when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What will ye do, or how will ye hide your sins before the Most High and his angels? You see that? How you going to hide, man? All right. It said the Lord's eyes are 10,000 times as bright as the sun. How are you going to hide from that, man? He sees every dark place. He sees your mind. He created you, bro. <laughs> he created you. He know exactly what type of vessel you are. But men are being weak minded, man. All right. And he says those that are faint hearted shall not be defended, man. You know, and you we want we doing all of this because when all hell breaks loose, we want a defense. We want somebody to protect us because we know, he says, Jacob, we are as a worm, man. All right? We wanted somebody to protect us because Esau ain't going to protect you. Esau don't give a damn about you. Right? Your woman ain't going to protect you. Your mama ain't going to protect you. We looking for Yahweh Shai and his angels to keep us safe in those times, man. 
you know? And that's what I was thinking, because uh, in the time of when it, in the time of Jacob struggle, you know, you don't want to have that doubt, you know, like, man, I didn't do enough, you know, because, man, if you if you got that doubt in the time of Jacob struggle, man, that, that's scary because it, it's gonna be a time like never before. Yep. You know, so if your confidence is not up in the time, we 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 trying to build up confidence for the time of of Jacob's trouble. Yep. All right, to have that faith in the Lord. All right, so if, if you're not, if you if you got, if you doubting yourself in the time of Jacob's trouble, man, all right, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be in the right spirit. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be moving uh, within the spirit of Yahweh Shemiah Shah. That's right. Bro. You're gonna slip up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and the Lord, and the Lord may may cut you off in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. You know, just because you, you know, you, you, you took, you know, this, this, this grace period that we have now, you took it for granted, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and you talk about that slothful servant, you know, the Lord said, you know, to that, uh, to the guy that had the one talent, thou slothful and wicked mm -hmm. servant, man. Mm -hmm. It's wicked to be, uh, to be slothful in this truth, man. All right. That's a demon, man. Yep. That's a demon that you need to shake. It's just like, just like how you shook smoking weed, right? Just like how you shook uh, being an adulterer, just like how you shook uh, praising Jesus, just like how you shook all of that, you got to shake that demon of being slothful, man. You got to pray to the Lord, hey, Lord, take this demon off of me, man. I, Lord, I need to serve you because I know this is the only way to get into a chariot, man. You know, uh, this is uh, 1 John 4 and uh, verse 17. It says, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world, man. You see that? So we want to have boldness in the day of judgment, man. You know, it, it, the, the scriptures say, talk about uh, we speak boldly. You know what I'm saying? We proclaim this word boldly. So everything we're doing is for bold. So in that day of judgment, we can have boldness. It, you know, uh, can you get that for me, Baba Kashan, in the blue letter? Uh, it's in uh, 1 John 5 and 17, uh, 4 and 17, excuse me. You know, we it says we may have boldness, man, because at the end of the day, that's how that's the feeling that you want to have. Like, hey, you know, it's still a fear, and it's you know, you you like at the end of the day, we don't know if we're at a like, but we want to, you want to, in a little sense, you want to have your chest puffed up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Lord, I I, I did what you asked, Lord. You know what I'm saying? You want to, you want to, you want to feel a little proud, a little pride in your chest because you know you did everything that the Lord required. But if you if you doubt in that day, oh, is he gonna get me? Is he gonna pass over me? Shit, is a missile going to come down to him? You don't want to feel like that, man. That's a bad feeling, man. You want to be confident, man. You know? God, I think it says uh, free and fearless confidence. Free and fearless confidence, man. All right? Fearless confidence. So we understand that. We know that the fear is going to be there because we always fear your how about Shemiah Shah. Even in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be fearing your how about Shemiah Shah. Right? That's a part of the scriptures. That law still in our inward part, and part of that law is fearing the Lord. So it's not going to be fearless, all right, but it's still having a, a higher state of confidence, man. Go ahead, brother. It says uh, cheerful courage. Cheerful courage. We're going to be happy. A party is going to be happy, man. You know, with cheerful courage, man. We're going to be like, hey, this is the day that we waited for. This is the day we've been talking about for years, man, and it's finally here. So you got cheerful confidence, man. Go ahead. It says boldness, assurance. Boldness and assurance. All right. You have an assurance now that you like, hey, uh, Lord, I did my lessons. Lord, I, I, I came out to camp every week. Lord, I, uh, I, I was as brotherly as I possibly could. Lord, I know I'm not perfect. And in this flesh, I did things that I shouldn't have. But please have mercy on me. But all the things that you asked, I put off the ways of this world. I denied myself and I came to follow you, Lord. So please have mercy on me. You know? Please have mercy on the brothers that are standing beside me. But at the end of the day, if you're one of those men who are taking this as a joke and you're not taking this seriously, hey, don't be surprised if something bad happened to you, man. You know? You don't want to feel like that, man. Mm -hmm. hey, it's a little, it's a little bit more. Calm, bro. You got it. It says, without ambiguity, uh, and ambiguity means uh, uncertainty, mm. uncertainty, doubt, indecis indecision. It says hesitation. <laughs> See that? You know? Uh, what was the first word you said after uh, ambiguity without what? Uh, it says without ambiguity. But you, you described ambiguity. You said a word. It says uh, uncertainty. Like without uncertainty. You see what I'm saying? You're uncertain. You know what I'm saying? You, that, real, real talk. That goes back to being a double-minded man. You see what I'm saying? You Because that means uh, you feel uncertain in that time. That means one of your foot was in the world and one of them was in the truth. 
You see what I'm saying? So that means you was that's uncertain. <laughs> it says double meaning. <laughs> you double see that? sense. Double sense. Having double meaning. See? <laughs> uh, and it says James 1 and 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, man. You know, you go ahead and do that, man. You be uncertain on the day of the Lord, man. So hey, this is the time now. We be saying that, y'all like, well, you know. The Lord ain't coming back just yet. I got a little bit more time. Uh, can you give me a uh, Syrac 5 and 7 about the shot? You know, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I got a little bit more time. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to do my videos just yet. I ain't got to do a video every day. You know what I'm saying? I can take my time. It's okay. The Lord ain't coming back yet. Jacob's trouble ain't even happening yet. Hey, I'm going to say it like this. If you're waiting for Jacob's trouble to, to, do, to serve the Lord, it's already too late. Put it plainly. It's already too late, man. Because shit. The Lord, at that time, we know it's, it talks about the scriptures that would say about men are going to be saved in the 11th hour. But if you waiting until that time to convert your spirit and you already know the truth, it's already too late, man. You know, it's, it might be people in Jacob's trouble that might find out about the truth and that might start believing. You know what I'm saying? But for you men that already know the word right now, if you waiting in Jacob's trouble to serve the Lord, it's already too late, man. Go ahead, brother. Sirach 5 and 7, make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Right. Your ass gonna end up like DMX you keep playing around, man. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord, man. All right? Tearing means to wait and take your time because in Hosea, I mean, excuse me, uh, is that Hosea? It says in Hosea, uh, uh, though it tarry, wait for it. Or is that Habakkuk? Though it tarry, wait for it, man. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, know it, we know that the prophecy might take it. It says, it shall not tarry, man. It shall surely come. So make no tearing. Don't take your time to turn to the Lord, man. Go ahead, brother. And put not off from day to day. Put not off from day to day. That means don't be slack. Don't be certain, slothful, man. Take each day with sincerity, knowing that this is the day that I need to step up to the plate. This is the day that I need. To, and every day, that's how you're supposed to wake up. Like Apostle Ron Bob says, he says, your works for the Lord is only as good as today, man. As good as your last video. You see what I'm saying? And if your video, you like, if you, you only did, uh, your last video was one week ago. Shit, man. If the Lord come this week, it's over for you, man. You know? That's a slothful mindset, man. And so now you're going to be uncertain in that day. Oh, is he, is he going to get me? Is he going to pass me up? You don't want to feel like that's a terrible, on judgment day, it's already going to be a frightening day and going to be dark, man. You don't want to feel like that, man. That's the same way with Esau, you know, at the job. You know, you, you, as, you as good as your last day. You know, you may have one good day. Then the next day, if you do shitty that day, you're going to be all over your ass. Yep. Yeah. Your ass can get fired. Yep. You can get fired from that day, man. You came in and made a mistake on the job and shit. You're like, your ass is out of here, man. You see what I'm saying? So you only as good as your last work that you did for the Lord, man. So bring your ass to camp, man. Come, come on to camp. Do your lessons, man. Every day, if possible. There should only be unforeseen reasons why you can't do your lesson for the day, man. And you know the apostle said, you ain't. It ain't. He didn't even set the standard that you got to do a ten minute video no more. Even though most brothers do, he didn't say that. He said do a video a day, man. You know what I'm saying? You got young men that are out here doing three minute videos. Hey, at least they doing something. Something that's better than nothing, man. You ain't got no reason why you can't do a, a five minute video praising the Lord, man. You can't get the Lord five minutes of your day. You can't get the Lord ten minutes of your day, man. Your ass, you'll serve Esau for eight hours a day. You'll give your woman three hours a day. You'll give your kids three hours a day. You know what I'm saying? You'll do all whatever relaxing is uh three hours a day. But you can't get a Lord 10 minutes. What does that say about you, man? It's time to change your mindset how you feel about your how about Shimon Shah. You got it. It says, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security. Thou shalt be destroyed. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in our security thou shalt be destroyed. DMX ass is now up in a damn hospital, man, in a vegetative state, right? And just a month ago, he heard about the word of the Lord, man. Okay? And he been new. His ass got Exodus 1 and 7 on his neck. And that literally says the children of Israel in that verse. All right? But you, he, he, what did he start doing? Putting off him. Hey, you know, Esau might have took his ass out. You know what I'm saying? He might have started believing and Esau might have taken him out. You know, that might have been the case. You know, but at the end of the day, everything is the will of the Lord. Yeah, judgment of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So whatever, he was still doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. You know? So how much more are you men that are walking every day taking this thing lightly, man? It said, the suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come upon you, man. 
And when something happens suddenly, that's like when you're in a damn car accident. One minute you was cool and listening to your goddamn R&B. Next thing you know, the car came and smacked your ass, man. That's how the wrath of the Lord hit, man. You ain't expect it to happen. You know? So don't wait. Don't put off from day to day. That wrath of the Lord will come upon you suddenly. He says, in your security, man. When you feeling safe and comfy yeah. is when the wrath of the Lord going to come, man. Kicking back, watching TV. <laughs> feet, feet up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just got a good meal. You just you got the items and shit. Yeah. You know? That's when the wrath of the Lord will come upon you, man. So don't wait until that moment, man. Tighten up, man. Tighten up, man. All right? Is it more on there? Are you good? Kind of a little bit more. It says, uh, and thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And perish in the day of vengeance. So that day of vengeance is talking about judgment day, man. You're going to perish because we know that one third of the nation of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're going to be delivered. And Lord willing, we have that number. But two thirds of our people, they're going to perish. And perish means to die, to kill, to slay, to do away with, man. They're going to perish in the day of vengeance. You know, and that, that, that scripture, that's how you know who the world even calls Jesus and coming back to be nice. That says the day of vengeance, man. All right. He's coming back to get payback on all the wicked people on the earth, man. You know, so if you ain't got nothing else, we can wrap it up after that. I have one, Con, uh, we can close it on that one. Con. This is second Ezra chapter nine and verse seven. It says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. Whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said pearls and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be saved by our works, you know, and by faith because faith without works is dead. That's right. You know, we, you know, it's going to be troubling times. You know, we can't even really uh, imagine, you know, the time, the time that we uh, that we finna come into. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, the Lord said a time like never before, man. All right, you can't take that for granted. All right, a time worse than slavery. All right, so you got to you gotta build up your works and your faith, man. Yep. All right, so we can be delivered out of this place, man. Yep, you got to do that pronto, man. Stat, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, uh, this lesson, we were just telling this because this, take this seriously, man. Take this work and the word seriously. The Lord gave you the greatest thing on the earth right now, man. The greatest thing, man, more than it says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a goodly pearl, man. All right. And the man tradeth all that he had to buy that pearl. So that means the Lord gave us this wisdom, knowledge and understanding is the greatest thing on the earth, man. And he gave that to you. All right. Take advantage of it and hold it, man. Keep that tight to your bosom, man. Hold fast. Hold fast <laughs> till thou hast, man. You know? So, hey, Lord, when this lesson was edifying, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh oh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Rekakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David. The elect for you, brothers, that's fighting. Keep fighting. Keep believing. And, hey, the day of salvation for us is coming, also known as the day of judgment. Lord, when this lesson was edifying. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom.